Andrew Kramer here for videocopilot.net and in this very special tutorial I'm going to show you how to create the look of someone blowing their head off with the help of our popular new product Action Movie Essentials. This new product is a set of 60 action stock elements such as muzzle flashes, explosions, blood and more. So here's what we're going to create. Let's go ahead and get started. What I have here is this suicide movie and basically what it is is a shot all by itself of our actor, my friend Tino, pretending to shoot his head off. And what we're going to do then is create a new composition. So I'm going to drag it into the make new comp button. Now the first thing I'm going to do is probably the last thing you were thinking of and that is kind of cut his face out using a mask. So the first thing I'm going to actually do is motion track this shot. Later on all of our other elements then can be linked to this motion tracking data. So what I'm going to do is just change the workspace to the motion tracking workspace and I'm going to select the layer and choose track motion. And then I'm going to hit rotation also and then I'm going to hit the tilde key over this part so I can bring it up. Usually I have more space but right now for the tutorial uh, you know. So what I'm going to do is look for two points that do not get covered by him or his gun during the shot. So I see a couple of spots over here that may work for the left one, perhaps this point here. And then maybe this telephone wire up here. So let's just drag this one right over here. And the default size should work fine. What I'm going to do now is hit the analyze forward button. Oops, let's try that again. Let's try there and right there. So this way I'm at the very beginning of the uh, layer and I'm going to hit analyze forward. Okay, and the motion track seems to have stayed on that point pretty well. So now I'm going to create a null object and the null object is basically going to be a placeholder for all this tracking data. So I'm going to choose layer new null object and then I'm going to hit edit target and make sure that the null is selected as the receiver of this data and now I'm going to hit I'm going to hit apply and apply it to the X and Y okay and now see all the data here has been populated and now I can move on to the next step and let's just close out these panels go back to the standard view now the next thing we need to do is create a way to get rid of his head now I was playing with a few different ways we could do this. We could try to paint it out and clone it but I found actually an easier way to do this. So here's what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the point in time right after he falls where kind of everything is blank and what I'm going to do is make a still frame out of this shot. So what I'm going to do is just close the null object data and I'm going to duplicate the layer control D or Apple D and then I'm going to choose right click and time freeze frame. We want to just basically make a still frame out of this point in time and then I'm going to go back in time, bring the opacity of the layer down, hit T and just drag the opacity down, maybe do 50%. And then I'm going to go forward to just before he shoots himself right here and trim the layer. I'm going to hit Alt, begin bracket, or you can just uh, drag it and trim it in. And then I'm going to go back to the point I freeze framed. And if you don't remember exactly where that was, just hit U on the keyboard and all your uh, keyframes will come up and the one that has the square under time remap is where you've frozen it in time. And that's important because we want to lock this layer to this point in time using the tracking data. So watch what happens when I take this parenting null or parenting whip and connect it to the null object that we've tracked the rotational for. And if I shut off my background layer and just watch it, you see it kind of moves around. Now if I turn my background layer on, you can see that it kind of moves around right against the background layer. So why is that going to help us? Well I'll show you. I'm going to create a new solid, just a white layer, and then I'm going to just trim it down also so that it's the same length as my other layer and bring the opacity down to 50 percent. Then I'm going to shut off temporarily my suicide layer. That's the layer that is just a still frame. Then I'm going to zoom in and I know this sounds kind of complicated but this is the trickiest part I swear. So what I'm going to do is take the pen tool and on this white layer is just draw a mask mostly around his head. And I'd explain why I'm doing this but I don't want to give it away. 
You know what I mean? And then I'm going to hit P, or first thing I'm going to do is drag the pan behind tool and just make sure that my center point is around his neck. That way if we rotate it, it rotates around his neck. And that looks pretty good. Then I'm going to hit P for position, hold down Shift, hit R for rotation, and set the keyframe for both of these. Then I'm going to move forward a few frames and just make this layer follow it. And if I have to go back to make sure that it's pretty good, I will. And I'm just hitting page down and just going through it. And a few more frames, a few more frames. Perfect. And that looks pretty good. Now if we need to, we can hit MM on the keyboard and expand the mask a little bit if we need to make it a little bit bigger or feather it a little bit more if we need to. Uh, but for right now, that should work. Now I'm going to bring the opacity of the layer back up to 100. And I'm going to put this white layer and call it Head Mat. And then I'm going to put it right above the Suicide Duplicate layer, which is now a still frame. And let me just shut the null object so that we don't see it there. And what I'm going to do is change the Suicide layer Track Mat to Alpha Mat. And what that's going to do is look at just the layer. I'm going to turn it back on there and use it as a mat. So as you can see, it kind of disappears as it goes down. So what I need to do is feather the edges of this a little bit more and also MM so I can expand it just so that we don't see it. And then I'm going to just trim a frame off of it and just move this in, move this in. And that way his head blows up at this point and his head kind of gets blown off. So let's just watch it right now. Okay, so that, I promise you, is the hardest part, and it's pretty easy, except it just takes a, takes a while to set that up. So the next thing we're going to do is create the blood, and to do that, we're just going to import an Action Movie Essentials element. So I'm going to choose File, Browse, and it's going to bring up our bridge, and what I have here is all my elements. Here's the whole set, and I believe there's eight categories, and in all these categories are the movie files that we're going to import. So if I go to my Blood Bursts category, I have a bunch of different ones in here. Some are... Some are for guns shooting out of the side of somebody, um, but there's a couple in here for blowing up heads or blowing off limbs, and that's this one right here. So I'm going to go ahead and just double click on it, and that imports it right into After Effects. Well, guess what? These elements are all pre-matted, and what does that mean? Watch this. It's ready to go. No keying or transfer moding or doing anything like that. Just drop it in and you're ready to go. So what we're going to do is line this up with the head, say right about here, and just move this over one frame. And that looks good about there. Now obviously these are very red and vivid. And there's no possible way I can know what you're going to be using these for. You could be using them for night shots, uh, anything underwater, I don't know. So the reason we make them so red is that way if you're using it very brightly, you'll have the data there, and if you need to darken it, of course you can do that. So what we're going to do is choose the layer, choose effects, color correction, hue, and saturation. Also, I'm going to choose effects, color correction, and levels. These two adjustments will give me everything I need to kind of match the color of this scene. So what I'm going to do is desaturate it, maybe about negative 60, and bring the lightness, because it's kind of a darker scene, maybe down to negative 30. And now we go to the levels adjustment and we can kind of give it that blacker look that kind of would be uh, similar to hopefully how we think it would look in this, uh, in this time of day. And we can even desaturate it a little bit more, negative 65. Um, so that looks pretty good. Blood can be pretty dark and especially when you're uh, off the side of the freeway and you got nothing else to live for, like this guy, apparently. Anyway, watch this. I'm just going to preview it back at this point. Pretty cool, huh? Now let's go ahead and line this up a little bit better. I'm going to move it to just here. Okay, so let's go ahead and add that muzzle flash. So I'm going to go back to the browse and pull up the muzzle flashes. And there's a few different ones in here, but I'm just going to take the first one here, the 9mm one. This is actually shot with a real Beretta 9mm. And just uh, double click again, and that'll import it. And if I go back to my project, I can take this 9mm and drag it right on top of all of our layers here. And then if I just line it up, shrink it down just a little bit, I can have it coming out of the gun. Now the problem is it's on top here, and that's okay. What we're going to do is choose Effects, Transition, Linear Wipe. 
And the linear wipe is basically a transition, but we're going to cheat and make it negative 90. And just shrink it so that it looks like it's kind of behind the side of his head. And let's just feather the edge of it a little bit. And let's change the transfer mode, F4 if it's not up, to additive. And that looks pretty good. So it just kind of shoots off there. And we can feather it a little bit more or extend it depending on uh, what we're trying to do. Okay, so that looks pretty good, but the next thing we need to do is keyframe this transition completion so that the whole thing is visible. Because there's actually smoke that follows this muzzle flash, and we want to actually use that. So what I'm going to do is keyframe the transition completion, move forward one frame, and just turn it all the way down to zero. And that way the smoke kind of stays up there, and it looks a lot better. So it's a little dim there, but what I'm going to do is select the layer, choose color correction, and take the curves and just boost it up and that way you can kind of see the remnants of the smoke there now when you shoot smoke out in a, in a spot watch if we just watch it the smoke kind of does what it does but it doesn't follow the shot very well but that's easy to fix now that we have tracking data so all we do is parent this layer to our null object which is our tracking data layer and now that smoke will just kind of hover in the air where where it first was emitted in the gun. So check it out. We can probably come down a little bit on the brightness of that smoke. Subtle. I know it's hard to see in the tutorial, but you know those are subtle effects that are really cool. Now in this particular shot, we wouldn't necessarily need to do the next step, but I just want to show you another thing. And I'm going to go to the brows. And I'm going to go to the fog banks here. And there's several different ones here, but I'm going to go ahead and import this kind of full screen fog element. And just double click. And go back to the project. And I'm going to take this fog layer and just overlay it on our shot here. And scale it up just a little bit. And then what I'm going to do is parent this layer to our null object, our tracking data. And what that's going to do is when the shot moves, um, let's go ahead and ex extend that to the beginning of the comp. When the shot moves, the smoke will kind of follow it, even though it's still kind of uh, is moving in the shot. So watch this. Now, not necessarily something we would do in this case, but definitely looks pretty cool. Like maybe this is an early morning shot. We can take the mask tool, cut it in half, feather it a bunch, hit F to bring up the feather properties. And that way maybe it just looks like ground mist as he blows his head off at the early dawn. That's... Uh, that's what I would be doing. No, no, don't, don't really kill yourself. But you can buy Action Movie Essentials and fake your death and perhaps get some insurance money or, or whatever. Um, you guys uh, figure that part out. Anyway, I hope you found this tutorial useful. I'm Andrew Kramer. Please check out Action Movie Essentials. It's a really great product, and uh, I think you might like it. Oh, and by the way... If you order Action Movie Essentials, you get the project file and all the footage in order to follow along. Um, I mean, I would post it up online, but it's not going to do you any good unless you have the Action Movie Essentials pack. So, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.